Good morning, everyone. It's 10 a.m. and I will order the meeting of the teleconference meeting of the Board of Directors for today, Friday, April 23rd, 2021. And please note this meeting is being recorded. Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Starting with Director Arnold. Absent Director Frederick. Here. Present. Director Garbarino. Here. Director Grossel. Here. Director Hernandez. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Mastin. Here. Director Melgar. Absent Director Rabbit. Absent Director Rodoni. Here. Director Snyder. Present. Thank you. Director Stephanie. Present. Second Vice President Cochran? Here. First Vice President Dirio? Here. And President Barr? Present. Thank you. Would you, you have a quorum? Please? Uh, sure. And right when I was saying that word, I believe uh, the oh, Director Arnold is trying to join us, but I'll confirm that when she's on. And staff on the line, do we have General Manager Dennis Mulligan? Yes, present. Joe Wire? Yes. Thank you. Eva Bauer Furbish? Present. Thank you. Kim Manolius? Present. Thank you. And I believe Madeline Chen is also on our line? Yes. Thank you. Steve Miller? Present. Thank you. Mona Babaka? <coughs> Present. Jim Swindler? Present. Kelly Hopper. Present. Thank you. And while I was doing that, I believe Directors Arnold, have you joined us? Yes. Thank you. And Director Melgar, I believe you're on the line as well. Yes, present. Thank you for confirming. You have a quorum, and uh, the only person not on the line is Director Rabbit. All right. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this morning, and I believe Director Melgar, this is your first official teleconference meeting with us. Uh, so welcome. Thank, we appreciate yeah, thank you. It's actually my second, but thank you for the We're welcome. Just, my how time flies. I do recall we when we uh, administered the oath of office you were with too, so I appreciate it. Um, anyway, welcome. And thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. And as you know, um, we beg for patience as we continue to conduct our business in this manner. So I'll be asking board members if they have any comments or questions on the agenda items. And if there are questions, the secretary will call on you accordingly. And after the discussion, we'll take the appropriate vote. And if you're not speaking, I know that this is uh, Director Frederick's favorite comment, but please make sure you mute your phones um, so that we minimize noise today. And uh, remember to unmute when you're speaking. And each page of the, mute of the meeting packet is numbered on the bottom right-hand corner for ease and following along. Director Rodoni, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, thank you. Please join with me. I pledge allegiance to the That's flag of the United States, 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 States of America, America. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We'll now move into the public comments for any and all items on today's, today's agenda. So if you wish to speak on the item, you don't have to wait for the item, but please speak now. Um, I just took your words, Amrit, sorry about that. Um, no problem. Justine Bach is assisting us today again, and thank you again, Justine, to moderate the public comment line. Um, would you please introduce our first speaker? Good morning, President Parr, certainly. Our first speaker today is Kimberly Renee Gamboa. Kimberly, good morning. Okay, good, good morning. morning. Uh, my name is Kim good morning. My name is Kimberly Renee Gamboa, and I'm holding one of my favorite photos of my 18-year-old son, Kyle Emerson Gamboa, displaying a happy, beautiful smile in his high school class picture. Kyle jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge on September 20th, 2013 at 11.45 a.m. 
I want to thank you for continuing construction on the Golden Gate Bridge suicide deterrent, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. A suicide deterrent is more important than ever in helping people cope, especially during this crisis. I would also like to advocate for the Golden Gate Bridge Patrol, the Golden Gate Bridge maintenance crews and staff, and the Golden Gate Bridge construction crews and their continu continuing exposure to the suicides on the Golden Gate Bridge. I would like to advocate a strong mental health support system for all of the workers. I really don't know how they cope with the suicides, and I'm sure it is taking a toll on them. The workers witness the suicide and don't know anything about the person and probably never hear anything about the person again. They wonder, they feel the loss, and I'm sure it weighs on them. I'm asking if you could please reach out and make sure that everyone is being supported and getting what they need for their mental health. All the workers have a very difficult job on the bridge with the physical conditions of weather and traffic, the configuration and height of the bridge, safety, and other factors, and to have to deal with the emotional stress of the suicides along with their work, I am sure sometimes it is just too much. Um, Manuel and I would offer any assistance or if anyone would like to talk, we are totally available. So I just want you guys to take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Our next speaker is Dave Rohde. Mr. Rohde. President Parr, board members, managers, and staff, good morning. My name is Dave Rohde. I'm with the Climate Reality Project. I come to you today as one fired up climate activist. And I come to you not just as a San Francisco resident, but as an American citizen with new hope for a future in which we have successfully mitigated the impact of climate change. And I address you all as part of that American leadership that can help turn the tide. Right now, President Joe Biden is hosting 40 world leaders in an unprecedented climate summit. The goal of this summit is to set the pace and tone for dramatic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions worldwide in the next 10 years. Biden's climate agenda is second only to his COVID agenda. He has assembled a who's who of veteran climate leaders and young climate activists to help formulate aggressive policies on climate solutions and climate justice. The Biden administration is committed to cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030, which, by the way, surpasses California's commitment of 40% reduction by 2030. So what does this, all this have to do with you? If you are the capable leaders that I think you are, the bold climate agenda at the national and international level should urge you to step up your own climate agenda. I know you already have a lot on your plate, but whatever your political mission includes, climate needs to be at the top of your list. If you think we have 20 or 30 years to solve climate, you've been misled or you've just not been paying attention. We have 10 years to get this right. I'm not laying all the responsibility at your feet and I'm not angry with any of you, but I want you to see what I see and react with the same level of disappointment and determination. I think how excited I was a few years ago at the idea of taking a ferry to Larkspur then jumping on the smart train to visit my family in Santa Rosa. When I learned that the smart trains are powered by diesel engines, not electric, I wanted to throw myself on the tracks and scream, you're killing me, you're killing all of us. When I learned that the SFMTA is buying 30 new buses that will run on renewable diesel for the next 30 years, I wanted to stop every bus in the city that proclaims clean air vehicle and yell, no, you're not. Biodiesel does not equal clean air. And when I learned that the feds ponied up $5.9 million last year toward the cost of a new Golden Gate Bridge District ferry, I thought, surely this has to be an electric ferry. And while I thank you for your time and openness, Mr. Mulligan, I was shocked that you're making a 30-year commitment to a big new catamaran ferry that's not electric because you think that electric ferries aren't fast enough. This is simply uninspired thinking. As U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres said in his latest climate address, we need to do more and faster now. And as Jane Flegel, the director of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, said about today's climate Mr. summit, Climate isn't just aligned with the economic agenda. It is the economic agenda. It's time to fully embrace the word emergency in the climate emergency resolution that this board passed, and it's time to align your leadership with the aggressive goals of the nation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Rohde. Our next speaker is David Pilpel. David, go ahead. David, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry, I was having problems um, unmuting. Um, so uh, 
on public comment, I think the minutes are fine and the general manager, attorney, and engineer's reports are comprehensive as usual. And I just wanted to um, highlight uh, Maurice uh, Palumbo and Barbara Vincent from the planning department who are both uh, noted in the general manager's report and their uh, good work for the district over many, many years. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Popo. Our next speaker is Roxanne Station. Roxanne, go ahead. Hi, my name is Roxanne Statchen. I'm a resident of Western Cal Hollow within eyeshot and now, unfortunately, earshot of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, the noise that the bridge makes is a huge impact to me and to my family. We know there's a lot of windy days in San Francisco near the bridge. This has never been a secret. And um, now that the sound that is being produced by the bridge, it's prolonged and it is disruptive to our daily lives, both inside and outside of our house. In my opinion, this was a major engineering oversight. The project was apparently initiated as part of a wind retrofit. So you know it's windy. And to not have done the proper analysis ahead of time, ahead of construction, is really a stain and an embarrassment on the engineering leg legacy of the Golden Gate Bridge District. My comments are that uh, if questions about if the wind retrofit work is continuing while this flaw is in place, I do not think it should continue and more noisy railing should be put up until there is a fix that has been identified. Secondly is the pace of the studies. It is extremely important that this is done and it is done quickly so that the residents are not disrupted by this noise any longer than necessary. And lastly is the communication around this. It should be far more transparent and proactive to affected residents so that we can find information easily on your website about the status of making this important fix. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Cleason. President Parr, we, um, that is the last of the public speakers. However, we do have some people that joined a few minutes late. If you'd like me to continue to pull the room, if you can give me a moment. Yes, please, if, whatever please you'd do. Like. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else? Thank you, President Parr. She is pulling the room right now, and it sounds like there are additional speakers, so she'll introduce them shortly. All right, thank you. President Parr, we have um, Shane Weinstein who will be speaking next. All right, thank you. Good morning, Shane. Okay, can you hear me? We can. We can, Shane. Oh, okay, good morning, uh, Chair Parr and Director. Shane Weinstein, President of the ATU. Uh, today you will hear from staff that they're losing $1.4 million weekly. You're also gonna hear from staff about how federal funding is balancing our budget completely. What you may not know is that the MTC is sitting on roughly $1.7 billion of American Rescue Plan funding that has not uh, yet been accounted for. This is the largest tranche of federal funding yet. The agencies gave scenarios back in January to secure CARISA funds. The agencies, again, will go back in the coming months to present budget or budget funding, which includes American Rescue Plan monies for their specific agencies. The MTC will 100% make these agencies' budgets whole. I ask that at the forefront of all directors and staff that we keep our workers and their livelihoods of the utmost importance. In these proposed budgets, all of these frontline workers, that they get a raise that they deserve. My members were infected with COVID-19 at 15 to, between 15 to 20% rate. They weren't able to work from home. Please keep them in mind 
We have a whole property of labor who deserves a raise. They were here during the pandemic. They're going to be here half afterwards, and they deserve everything. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Our next speaker is Barry Toronto. Barry, go ahead, please. Yes, hi. Good morning. Uh, I'm Barry Toronto. I'm uh, with uh, the Taxi Workers Alliance. I want, uh, although I'm not speaking on their behalf, I want to, though, thank the staff of the Bridge District for creating a taxi staging area uh, in the lot by the Welcome Center. Uh, it's taken years and, and months and months uh, of asking board members and others to help create this area so we don't get harassed by the bridge patrol uh, in being available for, uh, for people, visitors to the bridge and who walk across the bridge. So thank you very much. Only, it was an email blast that went out to the industry regarding this space, although I was there last Sunday and the, the cones showing the temporary uh, staging area were not there. So I'm wondering uh, whether we need to have that or not. Um, the next topic, I want to say is, uh, as a resident of Marin and coming across the bridge all the time, uh, uh, I want to say that I'm concerned about the speeding on the bridge. I learned recently that the bridge patrol are not to enforce uh, speeding. I think, I know that you don't have a lot of money, but uh, you need to arrange to get the CHP or give the bridge patrol powers because the speeding is atrocious. I, I, I know I was weird speaking as a taxi driver complaining about the car is speeding, but the, the speeds on that bridge are dangerous, extremely dangerous. So I'm hoping that you would deal with that. And last but not least, I hope you found other work for the guys that were, that were moving the uh, dividers across the bridge on the morning and in the evening commutes because they're not having to do it regularly. So I hope you've been able to find other ways to keep them busy. Thank you very much, and have a good weekend. Thank you, Mr. Tarasso. President Parr, we have no more speakers at this time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mulligan, are there areas that you would like to comment on to make some clarification? Um, some certainly. Um, certainly. Uh, we uh, always struggle with available real estate at the south end of the bridge when it gets busy, uh, but we have provided a spot for drop-offs recently. With respect to speeding, um, under state law, our staff is not allowed to enforce the speed limit. That falls within the jurisdiction of the California Highway Patrol. Uh, we reach out to them and work very closely with them when we see speeds increase. Um, as vehicles go through the toll plaza, all the speeds are observed and recorded. Um, so we're uh, aware and we work very closely with them um, to uh, ensure adequate enforcement. And it is one of those issues that is an ongoing challenge. Uh, they'll enforce for a while and speeds will be good and then they slowly creep up over time and then they'll come out and enforce again. Um, but they are out there and we're very appreciative. Uh, for the CHP, it's the Marin office that takes a lead in that, and Captain Mode is a great partner. With respect to noise, uh, Ava can talk under the engineer's report. Uh, Ms. Bauer Furbish, with respect to the um, ongoing research and activities, um, with respect to that for the uh, resident of Cow Hollow. So I'll defer to Ava when it's time for her to talk about her um, report. Uh, with respect to uh, um, uh, Mr. Shane Weinstein, uh, we're very appreciative of his advocacy for additional funding from the feds via MTC to the Bridge District, and we encourage him to continue that advocacy. And I think that uh, How about the mental health thoughts. support Do you want to comment on the mental health support services that we provide? I know we yeah, have we, a number of them. Yeah, we spend time keeping our, our staff healthy. Uh, we have uh, an uh, active employee assistance program, but we don't wait for um, someone to experience challenges. Uh, we bring the uh, staff, the counselors in periodically just so they have a relationship with staff so that when they um, uh, do witness something that's troubling and challenging, um, the person that they'll be talking to is a, a known quantity to them. Uh, we spent time with our contractors, employees. Um, also, we've had Captain Rivera and his team do presentations to them and make them aware of what resources might be available. Um, but it is an ongoing challenge. Uh, um, Kimberly Renee Gamboa is correct. It is very uh, difficult on our staff when they uh, witness a loss of life. And so it is something that we try to help our employees navigate. And we look forward to com the completion of the net so we will no longer have to contend with that challenge and crisis here at the bridge. 
All right. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Secretary, would you please move us through the agenda? Thank you. I'm going to move on to item number five, which is to approve the consent calendar, including the approval of minutes from the committee and board meetings of March, as well as ratification of previous actions by the auditor controller. And the consent calendar packet is located on page five to 24. Um, specific to the March 25th, 2021 finance meeting minutes, First Vice President Terrio did remind me that he recused himself from one of the manners under discussion there. So I will be noting that First Vice President recused, uh, Terrio recused himself for closed session report out on uh, the item for Terry Roberson. Other than that, that is the changes that I will be making. Thank you very much. Before we take our vote, are there any questions from board members on the consent calendar? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please, uh, uh, do we have a first, do, may I have a motion on the, on the item? Please? Motion. Thank you, Madam Second. Second. Thank you, Madam yeah. Secretary, would you please conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item number five, the consent calendar, with a first from Director Snyder and a second from Second Vice President Cochran, starting with Director Arnold. Aye. Thank you. Director Frederick. Yes. Director Garbarino. Yes. Director Grosbel. Yes. Director Hernandez. Aye. Aye. Director Hill. Director Hill, is that you in the yes? Yes. Thank you. Director Malcolm. Aye. Director Melgar. Aye. Aye. Director Rabbit. Absent. Director Rodoni. Aye. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Second Vice President Cochran. Yes. First Vice President Terrio? Yes. Yes. And President Parr? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That motion passes 14 to 0. Thank you. Would you please introduce the next item? <clears throat> item number 6A is the report of the general manager, and that staff report can be found on page 25. And General Manager Dennis Moe again is here with us to give his report. Go ahead, Dennis. Thank you, Madam Secretary, President Parr, members of the board, members of the public. Um, my written report is before you, and I'll highlight a couple of topics in it. Um, most importantly, bridge traffic continues to be stagnant now. It's been hovering uh, down 20 to 30 percent below pre-COVID levels. Um, per the policy of the board, the bridge is our first priority, and to the extent tolls are available after the bridge is taken care of, we fund a, a robust transit system. So if bridge uh, traffic is down 20 to 30 percent, we are um, obtaining enough tolls to cover the cost of the bridge. Um, but in terms of the uh, tolls beyond that amount, the tolls available for transit are down about 50% compared to pre-COVID levels, and tolls were the principal source of funding for our transit system. So we still are operating under great financial uh, distress. And we're very grateful and appreciative for Congress for the coronavirus relief uh, aid that they have provided. That um, one-time money allows us to make payroll and continue to provide vital service. Interestingly, um, while bridge traffic is down 20 to 30 percent uh, compared to pre-COVID levels, the traffic that has come back is the non-commute midday and nighttime trips. At this juncture, very few people are commuting from the North Bay into San Francisco for work. Um, because in addition to bridge traffic being down during the morning commute, and my report inadvertently says 50 percent, it's actually down 40 percent. Uh, but while it's down 40 percent, our ferry uh, ridership, which is almost all commuters, is down 96 percent. We're only carrying 4 percent of our prior customers. And our bus ridership is down 80 percent. And uh, so there's not people going into San Francisco for work. Um, while the state has announced uh, a broad reopening to occur on June 15th, um, coupled with the elimination of the color-coded COVID tiers, that announcement still encourages remote work. So we anticipate a slow, steady return of commuters uh, in the coming months. Uh, in spite of the encouragement for uh, remote work to continue, um, as vaccinations become more commonplace, coupled with the decline in the rate of COVID-19 infections, uh, we will start to see a return of commuters in the Golden Gate Corridor. Staff is working with the region's other transit operators, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, and the business community 
to understand how businesses and community organizations envision their reopening and the associated return of travel broadly throughout the Bay Area. Um, MTC's Blue Ribbon Transit Recovery Task Force has this at the forefront. At the meeting next Monday, they'll have a presentation uh, by their consultant, EMC, who with the Bay Area Council has done a series of polls and we continue polling employers as well as residents to understand commute patterns. With respect to our specific uh, commute corridor, we will be reaching out in the North Bay, especially to our prior customers, and polling them to understand what their plans are with respect to returning to on-site work and community in the quarter again. We're very fortunate that um, we have uh, great communication channels with our uh, transit customers. Uh, most of our customers ride the same route all the time, so they've signed up for electronic notifications that we push out to them when we change schedules on their route or we change, uh, or if we have a, a late bus on their route. So if someone commutes, say, out of Mill Valley and they ride the Route 4, they'll be notified quarterly what the updated schedules are. But if their specific bus is running late, uh, significantly late, they'll be notified. We'll use those channels to push out surveys to our customers in the coming months so we can uh, time the return of service. It is important that we bring service back in a gradual uh, fashion uh, to meet customer demand. And it's our intent to bring back service to meet all the demand that's out there, but we don't want to run empty buses in the corridor. Um, other things going on, uh, you may recall that uh, uh, we, recognizing our customers won't come back until vaccinations are widespread. The district reached out to Marin County Health and Human Services in mid February uh, and offered our Larkspur Ferry Terminal parking lot as a mass vaccination site. Um, our staff from Ferry and the uh, bridge uh, made modifications on site and it opened on February 21st. And I just wanted to share with you that to date thus far, over 35,000 people have been vaccinated at your ferry terminal. So we're proud to be part of the solution uh, to allow the reopening to uh, proceed quickly uh, so that our customers come back. With that, I would like to mention one item not in my report uh, this month, and that is the Bridge District is in active discussions and negotiations uh, with respect to ferry service from San Francisco to Angel Island and Tiburon Ferry Service. Um, Blue and Gold is a private operator that operates ferry service from San Francisco to Angel Island, and they operate service from San Francisco and Tiburon. You may recall about three years ago, they petitioned the California Public Utilities Commission to drop the commute ferry service out of Tiburon, and the Bridge District stepped into their shoes, and we've been operating that commute ferry service from Tiburon to San Francisco for a couple years now. More recently, Blue and Gold desires to abandon uh, the Angel Island and Tiburon service. So I wanted to make sure that you're all aware that we have ongoing discussions with state parks. Um, we've uh, discussed possible terms with them of a landing agreement, but our intent and desire is to step into Blue and Gold's shoes and provide connectivity to uh, Angel Island from San Francisco. Um, it's clearly in our best interest to allow people to hop on a boat in San Francisco to get to Angel Island, as opposed to having to drive across town across the Golden Gate Bridge into Marin to catch a ferry in Tiburon. Um, we're also in discussions with the private property owner, AC Ventures, that controls the Tiburon Ferry Landing. And uh, we hope to have items coming forward to you in the next month or two with respect to a lease with state parks for Angel Island and with AC Ventures for the Tiburon Landing. Um, I would also like to acknowledge some retirements and employee recognitions. Uh, we had a bus operator, Breen Duarte, he retired after 21 years, eight months of service with the district. He joined us initially as a, a full-time operator on July 4th, 1999, and we wish Mr. Duarte a happy and long retirement. Thomas Farr is another bus, bus operator who chose to retire recently. He retired on April 1st after 22 years and 10 months of service with the district. Um, those are the two retirements that have occurred in the last month. Um, also, we have some recognitions, one of which was mentioned by one of the public speakers. Uh, uh, Mr. Maurice Palumbo is the manager of traffic engineering and transit facilities planning. He's a licensed traffic engineer. He's active nationwide in setting uh, traffic engineering standards, and we're very fortunate to have him as part of our staff. And I'm pleased to announce that he celebrated 25 years of service with the district on April 15, 2021. And he is an incredible advocate and an uh, incredible asset for the district. Uh, in his free time, he loves traveling internationally, downhill skiing, walking, stamp collecting, and calligraphy. Also, we have a bus operator who celebrated, or excuse me, a bridge painter who celebrated 25 years of service, Reynaldo Charles Jr. Um, he's been with us for 25 years. 
He initially joined us as a part-time lane worker. Those are the employees that used to put the tubes in the roadway. Uh, he took that role on April 23rd, 1996. He then became uh, a laborer with a promotion in October 1997. Then he became a paint laborer. And then he applied for the paint apprenticeship program, which he completed. And then he became a bridge painter. And we're very appreciative of his 25 years of service to the district. We uh, look forward to many, many more good years uh, of service from him. And it also, his uh, career path highlights the ladders of opportunity that the Bridge District offers, offers to members of the community. Uh, in his free time, he enjoys coaching his two boys in baseball and taking his daughter to volleyball practice. Uh, then for the Employee of the Month, uh, the Employee of the Month uh, committee selected Ms. Barbara Vincent. She's a principal planner uh, in the planning department and we're pleased to uh, recognize her as the Employee of the Month. Uh, interestingly, she originally started with the Bridge District as a bus operator, and then she became a uh, scheduler, run-cutting trainee, and ultimately she rose to become a principal planning planner in the district's planning department. Uh, Ms. Vincent uh, has played an instrumental role this past year in our Emergencies Operations Center. Uh, her efforts in bringing um, the team together and briefing on a initially multi-times a week, uh, then weekly and more recently every other week basis is greatly appreciated by all. She's always willing to offer needing helping hand and she's an effective problem solver and she's been instrumental in our efforts this past year. Um, she's honored to be receiving this award. She enjoys knitting, crocheting, language learning, translation and travel. And uh, my hat's off to Ms. Barbara Vincent. That concludes my report and I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Just on behalf of the board, um, congratulations again to the two retirees um, and to the 25-year service award uh, employees. Um, it's still our great sadness that we don't get to see you in person. And congratulations to Barbara, the employee of the month. Are there? And I would like to personally um, thank the the general manager for including what I call the color of money charts. Um, I know that we see those in finance, but I think it's important that they remain in the general manager's report. Are there comments from the board members or questions on the general manager's report? Um, uh, Madam President. Uh, Director Sherry. Go ahead, um, Amaret. I'll let you do it because you have the you know who's on. Yes, I heard uh, Director Cherio, uh First Vice President Cherio, and Director Crosswell. So, Director Cherio, go ahead. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, General Manager Mulligan has any remarks on the pilot high occupancy vehicle program for um, Lombard and Park Presidio in San Francisco. Yes, uh, we're thrilled. Uh, I want to tip my hat to Jeffrey Tumlin, uh, the General Manager for San Francisco MTA, the Director of uh, Transportation, and his team. Uh, earlier this week, um, San Francisco MTA board voted five to one to implement some temporary HOV lanes that will speed up our bus service. Um, the most important thing to uh, address the emissions associated with vehicle travel in California, and vehicles are the number one source of emissions in California, is to encourage transit use. And the best way to encourage transit use is to get transit out of traffic, to speed up bus trips. And so uh, this is uh, fantastic work that they've done. Uh, they've worked very collaboratively with us on this effort, and uh, we're very, very appreciative to that. Um, Pre-COVID, um, not having a, a bus-only lane, uh, travel times leaving downtown San Francisco over the prior five years had increased by about 20 to 25 minutes for some of our bus routes at certain times of the day. Having dedicated HOV lanes on city streets uh, is uh, instrumental and vital in, in speeding up transit trips. So there's an incentive to ride a bus as opposed to driving uh, in your own car. And uh, it's in the best interest of the community to encourage as many people traveling from the North Bay into San Francisco for work to ride a bus or ride a boat, uh, as opposed to clogging the streets, as well as Highway 101 in the North Bay with their vehicle trips. And so thank you for bringing it up, Director Tirio. Uh, uh, Executive Director or General Manager Tumling was uh, texting me uh, when they were discussing the item, and uh, we're just thrilled that they did that. Uh, and thank you, uh, General Manager Mulligan. I've, I've wanted to express enthusiasm for it, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that's uh, in accord with the uh, with the uh, district's uh, staff's position. Thank you. Thank you, and I think Director Grosbel, you were next. 
Yeah, I just wanted, and Dennis is aware of this, I just wanted to uh, thank and compliment Dennis and the staff for being involved on the Angel Island uh, Ferry Service. Uh, I know we think of that as a great, beautiful state park with picnicking and walking, but, uh, you know, I've been contacted. The Angel Island Immigration Station found it, you know, over there in Angel Island and very important to uh, a lot of people in this and they were worried that if there's no ferry service people would have to drive to Tiburon to catch a ferry to get out to that so uh, I do uh, hope that we're able to work in that area uh, and I just want to thank you uh, my hat's off to Jim Swindler our ferry manager uh, Jim Swindler our ferry manager uh, Mike Connor in from Hanson Bridget Luma Jellison from our planning department who's our real estate expert uh, as well as a whole host of others are working very actively and aggressively to bring that to closure and to start that service. Thank you for all those comments from board members and thank you for your report, Mr. Mulligan. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please introduce the next slide? <clears throat> thank you. I'm going to move on to item 6B, which is the report of the attorney. And that staff report can be found on page 41 of your packet. And on the line is Kim Manolius to present his report. Kim, go ahead. Thanks, Amaret. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Amaret said, the report's before you. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, we have three closed sessions on the agenda today. We're only going to take uh, the, the second one, which is the anticipated litigation case. Uh, the other two we're going to hold. Thanks so much. All right, thank you, Mr. Manolius. Are there any questions related to the attorney's report? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please introduce the next item? Thank you. Item 6C is the report of the district engineer. The report can be found on page 43 of the board meeting packet, and Chief Engineer Ava Barr-Furbush will present her report. Go ahead, Ava. Thank you, Amoret. Madam President, members of the board, I would like to touch upon bringing your attention to three ongoing projects. First one is the suicide deterrent system construction. Um, to let you know that the contractor continues installation of the net support on the bridge and uh, with specific focus on the north approach viaduct. Uh, they are also continuing installation of the traveler rails on the suspension bridge and the removal of the existing side travelers. Last week, uh, for those who crossed the bridge, uh, uh, you could notice that the contractor began uh, using the east, east sidewalk to uh, gain access to the east side of the suspension bridge for the installation of the traveler rails. Uh, uh, the contractor also continues development of a detailed work plan for the installation of the net on the bridge, uh, as well as there is a continuation of delivery of the net from the fabrication shop in Chicago to the contractor's Richmond yard. Um, uh, so uh, everything is going in the right direction. The second uh, item. Uh, I would like to briefly touch upon. In, Feb in February, the board approved a contract for conducting uh, um, inspection of the bridge using rope access. And uh, this inspection will begin next week. Uh, the day the uh, consultant will start on the north back span on the suspension bridge and continue uh, uh, through other spans of the suspension bridge through May, June, July, August, uh, September, October, and November. So there will be um, a lot of time where visitors to the bridge will be able to see uh, a very interesting operation of people basically hanging on the ropes on the bridge. And finally, I would like to address the issue of the uh, sound that emanates from the bridge during uh, during windy days. Um, as much as it's not very visible behind the scene, we're working really closely and diligently with our consultant uh, uh, who conducts the wind tunnel tests. We are in uh, uh, continuous discussions. It is not a, a system that we're working with. 
it's not something that we would have an example of from the previous uh, experiences. So we basically starting from ground zero. Uh, we were we managed to analyze to date many different variations, many different options how to modify the edges of the new railing pickets. And also, uh, we have to be uh, aware that if we have uh, a solution developed that checks in the wind tunnel, we also have to make sure that such solution is feasible, means that it's constructible and uh, economically uh, uh, feasible as well. So what we are doing, uh, we finally, uh, through the testing in the lab, uh, we reached the point where we know that there is a certain shape. Uh, it's um, how to describe it. It's, it's a strip of metal that is bent into the best to describe. It's a C shape type that we would then install on the outside edge and probably in some location on the inside edge of the ticket. So what we are doing right now, we are working with fabricators to find out what would be the easiest way to manufacture such shape. Uh, as you know, this will be quite substantial quantity. Um, in addition to it, we will conduct testing of the installation of uh, such elements because we have to make sure that it is possible to install. Also, we are scheduled to conduct the final test of this solution in June. So I hope that uh, if not at the June meeting, but in July, I will be able to uh, present to the board a uh, quite extensive and comprehensive uh, presentation on the development of the solution, on the results of the of the tests we have conducted, and present the final solution, and possibly cost estimate of what would it take to uh, implement it. So, with this, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have for me. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Bauer Furbash. Are there any questions related to the Chief Engineer's report? Um, Eva, I have one question, and, and I'll leave this to your discretion, but uh, I don't know, I haven't looked to see if there's any updated information on the website, but I think one of our speakers indicated that it was um, difficult for them to find any progress information, and I'm not thinking about detailed information, but the information you gave us at the beginning of your presentation right now just where you are in the process and sort of that you're moving along. If that seems appropriate to put someplace on the website, it might uh, it might allay some of the concerns that that some of the neighbors have. But I'll, as I said, I'll leave that to your discretion. Certainly, President Clark. So what what we had, we uh, tracked the progress in. Uh, I I have to say in quite abbreviated way in the chief engineer's report. But we will put together something that provides more detailed information of where we're going with our studies. And, and, and I, uh, I, will work. Yes. I think something that is brief is probably better at this point, uh, but just sort of a progress report. Um, That's right. That's right. I will work with Amoret to make this arrangement. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from any other board members or comments? All right, hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please continue with the agenda? Thank you. We're going to move on to item 8A. Um, since there's nothing on there, of course, but item 7. So we are going to move to the report of the finance auditing meeting for Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. And that summary of recommendations for this meeting can be found on page 79 of your packet. The specific finance reports are in the finance packet and online. Um, so I'm going to leave it out there. All right, and thank you. As a reminder to everyone on the call today, both public and board members, the action items that we're taking on today 
were discussed at length at yesterday's finance auditing me meeting before being forwarded to the full board for today's actions. Thank you to Vice Chair Fredericks for filling in yesterday on behalf of Chair Rabbit. So Vice Chair Fredericks, if you would please begin your committee's report to the board. I will, President Parry, thank you. The Finance Auditing Committee met yesterday and is recommending authorization of board agenda item number 8A1 to approve funding adjustment changes to the source funding composition in the Ferry Division Capital Budget relative to Project 1542 Service Life Extension Program for the Larkspur, San Francisco, and Sausalito Ferry Facilities, as detailed in the staff report, to increase the district's share of funding from 11% to 77%, thereby reducing the Federal Transit Administration's share from 80% to 22%, with the understanding that the project budget of $1,740,000 remains unchanged. And I so move. Thank you. I have a motion on the item. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Before we take our vote, are there any board members with questions or comments on this item? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item 8A1 with a first from Director Fertix and a second from second Vice President Cochran, starting with Director Arnold. Aye. Aye. Director Fredericks? Yes. Director Garbarino? Yes. Director Grosball? Yes. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Hill? Yes. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Melgar? Aye. Director Rabbit? Absent. Director Rodoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Second Vice President Cochran? Yes. yes. First Vice President Terrio? Yes. And President Parr? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The item is adopted. Vice Chair Fredericks, please continue your report. Finance Auditing Committee is recommending approval of board agenda item number 8A2 to authorize the general manager or designee to submit and ex execute grant applications, cooperative agreements, and certifications and assurances as required by the Federal Transit Administration for federal funding assistance for sections 5307, 5309, 5337, 5339, and by the Federal Highway Administration for Surface Transportation Program funding to support transit projects, commit the necessary local match funds for the projects, and assure completion of the projects as detailed in the staff report, and I so move. Thank you. I have a motion on the item. May I have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions from board members on this item? Madam Secretary, hearing none, would you please conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item 8A2 with a first from Director Fredericks and a second from Director Hill, starting with Director Arnold. Uh, <clears throat> aye. Aye. Director Fredericks? Yes. Director Garbarino? Yes. Director Grosball? Yes. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Hill? Yes. Director, Mas Director Mastin? Aye. Aye. Director Melgar? Aye. Director Rabbit? Absent. Director Rodoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Second Vice President Cochran? Yes. First Vice President Trio? Yes. And President Barr? Aye. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously as well. Thank you. The item is adopted. Vice Chair Fredericks, would you please continue with your report? 
Finance Auditing Committee is recommending authorization of Board Agenda Item Number 8A3 to approve the policy year 2021-2022 premium rates relative to the renewal of the district's health and benefits insurance plans at an overall estimated renewal cost of $19,072,777 as detailed in the staff report with the understanding that requisite funding will be included in the fiscal year 21-22 operating budget. And I so move. Thank you. I have a motion on the item. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any questions from board members on this item? I encourage all of you to uh, maybe even keep this particular agenda item. It's quite comprehensive and an important one for the board. So, Madam Secretary, hearing no um, questions, would you please do a conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. Voting on item 8A3 with the first from Director Fredericks and the second from Second <coughs> Vice President uh, Cochran. Director yes. Arnold. Aye. Director Fredericks. Yes. Director Garbarino. Yes. Yeah. Director Grosball? Yes. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Hill? Yes. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Melgar? Aye. Director Rabbit? Absent. Director Rodoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Second Vice President Cochran? Yes. First Vice President Durio? Yes. And President Barr? Yes. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The item is adopted. Vice Chair Fredericks, would you please continue your report? Thank you, Madam President. The Finance Auditing Committee is recommending authorization of Board Agenda Item Number 8A4 to execute contract number 2021-D033, time and attendance scheduling system, software licenses, application and hardware support services with Kronos Incorporated of Chelmsford, Massachusetts to provide software licenses, access to global application support, and hardware maintenance and support for the district's time and attendance scheduling system for a three-year term with two additional one-year option years for a total not to exceed amount of $367,735.70 over the entire term of the contract, including both option terms, as detailed in the staff report, and I so move. Thank you. I have a motion on the item. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Are there any questions from board members on this item? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please um, do a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item 8A4 with the first from Director Fredericks and the second from Director Garbarino. Director Arnold. Aye. Director Frederick. Yes. Director Garbarino. Yes. Director Grosbull. Yes. Director Hernandez. Aye. Director Hill. Yes. Director Meston. Aye. Director Melgar. Aye. Director Rabbit. Absent. Director Rodoni. Aye. Director Snyder. Aye. Director Stephanie. Aye. Second Vice President Cochran. Yes. First Vice President Tirio. Yes. And President Parr. Yes. yes. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The item is adopted. Vice Chair Fredericks, will continue with, continue with your report. Finance Auditing Committee is recommending authorization of Board Agenda Item Number 8A5 to receive the Independent Auditor's Engagement Letter for services related to the annual financial audit and single audit for the year ending June 30, 2021, as submitted by Ide Bailey, LLP, 
as detailed in the staff report with the understanding that in addition to the bulleted list on page 8 of the auditor's engagement letter, the auditor will also report to the board any opportunities for economy in or improved controls over district operations. And I so move. Thank you. Second. I have a motion. May I have a second? I heard a second. Yes. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board members on this item? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you please conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item 8A5 with the first from Director Fredericks and the second from First Vice President Terrio, starting with Director Arnold. Aye. Director Fredericks? Yes. Yes. Director Garbarino? Yes. Director Grosbel? Yes. Director Hernandez? Aye. Aye. Director Hill? Yes. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Melgar? Aye. Director Rabbit? Absent. Director Rodoni? Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Second Vice President Cochran? Yes. First Vice President Terrio? Yes. Yes. And President Parr? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The item is adopted. Vice Chair Fredericks, do you have anything further to report? I think Vice she Chair does. Fredericks is on mute. Um, that concludes the report from the Finance Auditing Committee. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Fredericks, and thank you for uh, chairing the meeting again yesterday. Uh, Madam Secretary, would you please continue with the next item on the agenda? We're going to move on to item 10 since there's no addresses to the board. Item 10A is the discussion and possible action to terminate the suspension of board procedural rules and policies for COVID-19 related emergency actions. Mr. Mulligan's brief staff report is again in your packet and he's available and on the line to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any board members who have a question for Mr. Mulligan on this item? Hearing none, I'll conclude the discussion on this. It appears that we should not be terminating the suspension of board procedural rules and policies at this time. May I have a motion to revisit this matter at the next regular board meeting on May 21st? Second. Second. Sounds like we have a number of firsts and uh, one of those shall we count for a second. Got it. All right. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Would you please conduct a roll call vote? Thank you. We're voting on item 10A, acknowledging Vice First Vice President Terrio for a first and Director Snyder as a second. Director Arnold? Director Arnold, are you still on it? We may have lost Director Arnold. We're moving on to Director Fredericks. Yes. Director Garbarino? Yes. Yeah. Director Grosbel? Director Grosbel? Yes, yes, there we go. Thank you. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Hill? Yes. Director Mastin? Aye. Director Melgar? Aye. Aye. Director Rabbit? Staffman? Director Rodoni? Aye. Aye. Director Snyder? Aye. Aye. Director Stephanie? Aye. Aye. Second Vice President Cochran? Yes. First Vice President Terrio? Yes. And President Parr? Yes. Well, thank you. I'll circle back. Is Director Arnold on the line still? Okay. So I'll have absent. Thank you. That motion passes 13 to 0. All right. Thank you. Before we move on to item 11, unfinished business, which will be Attorney Manolius' closed session report. I want to sincerely thank everyone again for patience during these teleconference meetings. We'll be placing the public on hold and we'll reconnect the call after the closed session discussion. Mr. Well, Manolius, would you please take us into closed session? Of course, President Parr, thanks so much. At this time, the board will go into closed session for a conference of legal counsel 
for uh, about regarding anticipated litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9b2 um, and we're ready to go thank you we'll have a slight pause here while we disconnect the public line this call is being recorded president parr and board of directors we're back in open session thank you mr Manolius. would you please provide your report out of course thank you president parr uh, the board met in closed session for a conference with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation under government code 54956.92 uh, and the board was briefed uh, and no action was taken thank you mr Manolius, for your report we have no new business to report. Item number 13 is communications. An updated communication summary was sent to directors yesterday. If you would like a copy of the actual communications, please contact the district secretary's office. We've reached the end of the agenda and there are no further items to be presented to the board. Again, thank you to everyone who joined us for today's meeting. May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So move. Also move. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. All right. Is there anyone opposed? Hearing no objections, we'll be adjourning today's meeting in memory of former Vice President Walter Mondale. Please join me in a moment of silence. This concludes the meeting of the Board of Directors. The time is 11.10 a.m. Thank you again, Board. We'll see you in a in a few weeks.